hoping the spirit will grant their request. If requests are fulfilled, they pay the spirit back in blood. In Voodoo religion, there is a contract that's entered into with spirits. If you don't go back and offer up the blood, you're actually not fulfilling the contract to its final term. This tree trunk is a sacred shrine to the voodoo spirit Don Coley, the spirit of the forest. The tools for making a request of Don Coley are wooden stakes and palm oil. This man makes a request of Don Coley. His request is represented by the wooden stake. By pounding the stake deep into the spirit's shrine, he hopes the spirit will receive the request. As an incentive to the spirit, the man makes an offering of red palm oil. Asking the voodoo spirits to provide them with some outcome is essentially a ritual for them to drive the request home, you might say. Kind of like lighting a candle in prayer to God. Some requests require the spirit be plied with alcohol. I will take uh, alcohol, spread on the collie, to make him more powerful, to make him drunker against my enemies who will think bad things against me. If Don Coley grants the request, the believer promises to return with a reward. If the enemies are hurt after the request, or if you get a solution for your problems after the request, you must be back to thank Don Coley. Don Coley is typically rewarded with the blood of a sacrificed animal. Although some ask Don Coley to punish their enemies, others ask for healing. I have one of my sons who was very sick. We went everywhere, traditional medicine and modern. But no satisfaction. But when I came here, my son is uh, care from that sickness. Today, the man has come to reward the spirit with the blood of a goat. When you get satisfaction, after six months or one year, you come and you sacrifice the animal for Dakar. First, the man gives the goat a message to take to the spirit. Then, the spirit gets its blood. If you do not finish the contract, it's very possible that the belief system says that there's going to be retribution, which will be to take away the event that actually happened, to reverse what was done for you. With the sacrifice, the man's contract with the spirit Don Coley is now fulfilled. When you make sacrifice, you take off. You take off the stick and you throw it away. So that means you don't have anything again to give to Dakoli, and Dakoli don't have nothing to do again with you, and you are satisfied. As with all sacrifices, the animal is cooked and eaten, with no part of the goat going to waste. Western medicine is common in West Africa, but remote parts of Benin offer a rare chance to see voodoo healing. This is a healing temple in the village of Abome, 50 miles away from the village of Veji. This woman says she suffers from splitting headaches and pain in her joints. She's been to a Western hospital, which she says didn't help. Now she turns to voodoo for healing. Going to see a voodoo healer to be healed is very similar to going to see a faith healer. It gives power back to you in the sense that you truly are bolstered in your belief that you will get better. Voodoo followers who don't find a scientific reason for their illness believe it may be caused by bad spirits, possibly the result of a curse placed by an enemy. To heal his patients, Voodoo priest Yamaje Batharlame calls upon the voodoo spirit Sojayatin, the thunder spirit. 
The priest uses shells to ask the spirit a series of diagnostic questions about the patient's health. The healer will evoke the voodoo spirits, and the spirit will tell them the kind of herbs you have to make use of to cure the disease. The use of carry shells in diagnostics here is not much different than the use of bones, tarot cards, dice, to read the future, to find out what's going on. It's a method of divination. The healer uses a sacred rattle called an asan to direct the spirit toward the woman. Alcohol is used to embolden the spirit and reward its cooperation in the healing. Once the priest believes the spirit has given him a diagnosis, he sends his assistant and the patient out for the cure. Instead of aspirin or cold medicines, voodoo pharmacies stock much more exotic items, including animal skulls, turtle shells, and dried reptiles. The healer sends his patient out to buy an animal skull because she suffers from a headache and the pain needs a place to go, another skull. But the trip to the market itself may have its own healing power. Sending this woman to the market to actually buy the items, the skull and the herbs, really gives her an active role in her own healing process. The ingredients alone are not enough to heal the woman. They must first be activated by the voodoo spirit. So you cannot go and buy some skulls, some uh, uh, chameleon, and put them together as you can buy aspirin or a Western medicine, put them together, give it to the patient. No. You need to know the words, incantation words. The voodoo priest uses the blessed animal skull to remove the sickness from the woman. By using the skull, you're doing a bit of sympathetic magic to draw out the head pain into the head of an animal. It's really transfer of energy. The final step in the healing process is to make sure the illness doesn't return. The priest offers the spirit gunpowder to help fight off future attacks by the illness. According to the shells, the priest judges the treatment a success. The mind can convince the body that it is healed or is going to be healed, and it will somehow start processes happening in the body to speed up the healing process. Just as many believe voodoo has the power to heal, some believe voodoo can be used to hurt or even to kill.